Hi everybody, so I wanted to explain the simulation pipeline of setting up and simulating a finite element model through a set of boundary conditions, similar to something that you would see in real life. When I think of FE simulations, I usually think of something like this. Well, what does this heat map represent? What was the loading environment for the object? And last, how do we actually use this? Results like this can be obtained using some common FE software such as LSDyna, ANSYS, or Abacus. Well, these programs are actually called the solver because it's solving for the complex problem that you've set up. Just a note though, I'm gonna assume that we already have the structure or the mesh of the model developed. If you wanna know anything more about this, you can look in the description and there's a video that may help you there. Simulations such as the one that I just showed are set up using something called a preprocessor. This is where you specify how you want to test or manipulate your model. Now each of these previously mentioned solvers may have their own built-in preprocessor, but it's best to think of each of these steps as their own entity to better understand the process. I'll also be using the LSDynA framework as an example here because it's what I'm most familiar with, but this can be applied to any FE program. The preprocessor for LSDynA is LS Prepost, which acts as both a pre and post processor, hence the name prepost. This is where you can find material properties for your model, prescribe specific motions to different objects, define constraints for the model, or even create physical boundary conditions such as impactors. For example, here we have a ball with a prescribed motion of 5 meters per second, which will be impacting against this wall. The material properties of the ball have been defined as elastic, like a common rubber ball you'd find in a shopping mall, and the wall has been defined as a thin sheet of metal-like material, so like sheet metal. A contact has then been defined between the ball and the wall, and the edge of the wall has been constrained in all directions so that it will stay in place under impact. However, the inner area of the wall will be allowed to flex, sort of like a piece of tinfoil, like a hood of a car. The preprocessor also allows you to define the details about a simulation, like the time duration of the event and what outputs you'd like to have. You can think of these output definitions as the FE equivalent to real-world testing sensors like accelerometers or load cells. This is a very important step because what would be the point of running a complex problem if you don't have any data to look at afterwards? Once the model is set up to run, you are ready to run the simulation through the solver. This is the brain of the operation, which takes all the variables that you provided into the preprocessor and solves for this problem over time. And what exactly is it solving for? Well, things like deformation of the ball during impact, the stress experienced by the wall, and the velocity of the ball rebounding off of the wall. This can be done by taking a really complex problem and breaking it down into easy to solve solutions made possible through each of these elements. The solution for the elements are then summed back up to give an overall solution to the problem. These solvers make our jobs much easier because solving for hundreds or even thousands of elements at each point in time would take ages to complete by hand. The length of time it takes for a simulation to finish can vary pretty drastically depending on the complexity of the simulation, the length of the simulation time, and how powerful your computer is. Some simulations can take days or even weeks to run, and that's not even on a personal computer, but on a server with dozens of processors. After the simulation has finished, the post-processor, which is the last step, can be used to open the output animation and analyze any outputs. The output data can be in the form of an ASCII file, which can be loaded in pre-post in the post tab. Here you can plot trajectories of the rubber ball or the force of the ball impacting the wall. The fringe tab can also be used to show a heat map of stress exhibited on the wall, similar to what we saw earlier. Now, it's important to take advantage of FE simulations and use whatever data you have effectively, because these simulations can shed light on lots of problems that may otherwise go unnoticed. A real-world example of this could be an automotive manufacturer discovering a small stress concentration at a joint in the vehicle frame, leading to failure of the frame. Discovering this using FE simulations can both save lives and prevent the company from wasting money on excessive physical testing. So recapping the process of running a simulation, we've seen that you can use a preprocessor to set up the event, run the simulation using the solver, and then use a postprocessor to retrieve and analyze any data from the simulation. And that's it for this overview. I hope this video was helpful. In the future, I'll go more in depth for each of these processes. Thank you for watching, and be sure to let me know if you have any questions about anything that I've gone over.